chapter 11, section 5. But natural law was discovered, not invented. This statement shows the, well, religious nature of the natural law cult. To see why its notion of discovery is confused, let us consider the law of gravity. Newton did not discover the law of gravity. He invented a theory which explains certain observed phenomena in the natural world. Later, Einstein updated Newton's theories in ways that allowed for a better explanation of physical reality. Thus, unlike natural law, scientific laws can be updated and changed as our knowledge changes and grows. As has already been noted, natural laws can't be updated because they're derived from fixed definitions. Rothbard is very clear on this. He states that it is, quote, very true that natural law is universal, fixed, and immutable. And so are absolute principles of justice and that they are independent of time and place. Ethics of Liberty, page 19. However, what he fails to understand is that what the natural law cultists are discovering are simply the implications of their own definitions, which in turn simply reflect their own prejudices and preferences. Since natural laws are thus unchanging and said to have been discovered centuries ago, it's no wonder that many of its followers look for support in sociobiology, claiming that their laws are part of the genetic structure of humanity. Oh, but sociobiology has dubious scientific credentials for, well, many of its claims. Also, it has authoritarian implications exactly like natural law. Murray Bookchin rightly characterizes sociobiology as suffocatingly rigid. It, it, it not only impedes action with the autocracy of a genetic tyrant, but it closes the door to any action that is not biochemically, uh, biochemically defined by its own configuration. When freedom is nothing more than the recognition of necessity, we discover the genes tyranny over the greater totality of life. When knowledge becomes dogma and the few movements are uh, and few movements are more dogmatic than sociobiology, freedom is ultimately denied. So, so sociobiology or social ecology in which way for the ecology movement pages 49 to 75 and page 60. In conclusion, the doctrine of natural law far from supporting individual freedom is, well, one of its greatest enemies. By locating individual rights within man's nature, it becomes an unchanging set of dogmas. Do we really know enough about humanity to say what are natural and universal laws applicable forever? Is it not a rejection of critical thinking and thus, well, individual freedom to do so?